especially especially when you're starting as a new comic you, you know i tell women comics all the time i go you you're married to this your yeah. husband is comedy and and your side bitch is whatever yeah. significant other i mean because in order to get to the point where you can make a living doing it mm -hmm. that's a lot of work it, it's such a a commanding kind of profession mm -hmm. um a lot of times guys feel emasculated because you're in control because you're the performer because you're the person that people come up to afterwards and say oh wow you were so funny they don't have that focus and it takes a really kind of mature guy to to um to be that kind of guy what is up square pimp brigade on this episode uh man school 202 comedian olga namer is here as we discuss balancing the relationship with a career and uh, how to navigate dating with uh in contrast to your religious views it's a fun one it's an interesting one we go kind of deep into this and um we appreciate you joining us if you love the show by the way if you're happy with all the technique and everything we're trying to teach you please subscribe to our patreon patreon.com slash manschool202 that's where we do all the bonus content uh, in fact, uh, this week our bonus content is a listener mail episode where we answer your uh, messages about the best way to go online dating and uh, why you don't actually need a strategy for dating and all that stuff. We always do the bonus content on patreon.com slash manschool202. Please join us. It helps support the show and it keeps us going. And uh, also, if you want any relationship advice, please feel free to hit me up. Email me uh, at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And we can set up uh, rates and all that stuff for uh, consultations if you need help for, for your uh, dating habits and want to improve your relationships. All right, let's just uh, get the show started. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up, Square Pit Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, we got a special show tonight. Now, I know I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Um, first and foremost, my partner in crime, Harry. What's going on, baby? You good? What's going on is I'm living my best life. Uh, I'm out here kicking ass and taking names, not necessarily in that order. You know, okay. I, do it, I do it differently. And right. uh, at the same time, though, I'm still having a tough time keeping these alligators down, man. I, I get it. I get it. I, it's hard. Pimping ain't easy. No. Uh, no. Uh, let me introduce our guest. It's really good fun to have her back. Um, I, I, here's why. Let me let me give you the, the background on this. Uh, how long? How long ago did we have Olga on the? My goodness! At this point, it might have been uh, at least seven or eight years ago. Seven, eight years. Let me see. I could actually look yeah. it up. Wow. Let's see. I'm oh. thinking five, maybe six. Six years ago. So we had Olga on the show. Um, Olga was very entrenched in Orthodox Judaism at the time and starting to do comedy. Yeah. And um, I think I said, but she already had the bug. Like she already got bit by the bug and she was like getting a lot of pressure from, well, let me, you know what? Let's, let's let Olga tell the story. I'm not going to tell the story. What, do you remember what was going on? I do. I do. It's funny that you even asked because when now that I'm so like in it, I forget about how much I struggled. And probably if I listen back to that podcast, I'd be like, oh, my God, you sound so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just remember and I still have like hints of it, but I remember being so worried to like leave. And I wasn't even I didn't leave my community, but it was just to do comedy and do uh i just felt like i was doing something wrong well the expectation uh within the family structure and the community was you were what were you supposed to be doing probably get married again they still right. want me to get married again and i mean you i could do both but i don't i don't think uh i don't know in still in my brain i don't feel like that 
But that's right. not that's not what's right. done in the Orthodox community, though. It's usually women are when you get married, you are a housewife, you take care of the children, that's it. There is no expectation to do anything professional, correct? Well, I mean, it, it you could do both, but being a comedian, I don't because uh, let's say just Shabbat dinner, I I wouldn't be home to cook Shabbat dinner. I'm out doing comedy, so yes, it's not it's not a no, I don't. I don't think I wouldn't. If if my brother brought home a girl like me, uh, I'd be like, "Oh, but so you're not gonna." This would be old me thinking. Oh, mm-hmm. so she's not gonna do Shabbat dinner. She's not gonna cook. She's not. What do you? You know, it's like that. Okay. So, yeah, and the, the holidays, like some holidays, I I do shows instead. I'll leave in the middle of like a holiday meal to run to go do a show. And like being a doctor. And and, and uh, for people who don't know the Jewish uh, religion, lots of holidays. It, it it's a lot of holidays. A lot lot going on throughout the year. There's so many you, holidays. You would be called. You would be considered Orthodox. Or your 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 people are Orthodox Jews, right? Yeah, modern Orthodox. What's the difference so, in Orthodox and modern Orthodox? Uh, I guess like I could wear pants, and uh, and grow, growing up, I went to yeshiva, so I did have to wear long, long skirts to school. But then after school, and on Sundays, I could wear pants. Now, how long? And, how, yeah. How long oh. is was that the case? Or how did this modern Orthodox, how old is that? I mean, just in terms of history. I'm not so sure. I guess maybe when they, I, all I can know is like when they moved to America, they wanted the Jews to be able to assimilate for business and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, because the, I think, and then there's also different, there's like, Sephardic Jews, and then there's Ashkenaz Jews. So the Sephardics, it's kind of like we have, like in my father's family, his brother was a rabbi and his his sister-in-law wore wigs. But also he has another brother that drives on the Sabbath. But they'll all consider themselves Orthodox and because it's, the I guess, the rabbi they go to maybe. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but um with then there's the like black hat community I get uh that's Hasidim they, they, yeah that's Hasidim yeah mm-hmm. but within my father's family there are Hasidic Jews mm-hmm. but it's but it's weird it's I find it I don't know to me I find it interesting that there could be levels of uh. They're all they all consider themselves religious and Jewish like that, but it, it, they have different levels of it. If that makes sense. Different different levels in terms of how 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 strict they are about following. The- I think they all keep Yom Kippur, and they all kind of like. So in my family, like I have a brother that will keep Shabbat, but he turns the light on on Shabbat. And then my sister will never turn the light on on Shabbat, but they all keep Shabbat and that. Or then there's like, um, they all go to the same school. Oh, so, can, so you can have different sex in the same school? Yeah, like, but it's all the same. I don't know. I don't know. How, okay, so like growing up, they'll be, they'll, it, so my parents won't eat unkosher the, they'll only eat in kosher restaurants mm-hmm. but then there's people within my same community that will eat in unkosher restaurants but kosher style like only kosher things like salad and mm. fish that's kosher okay. like that so it's maybe they all know the rules of orthodox but uh, they kind of pick and choose of what what they want to do and that's just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's no different than Catholics. I also found that with Muslims, too. There are different, like, levels of how committed you are yeah. or, or the strictness of the religion. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, it's like, the, like you were a Catholic. It's so, so the same thing. 
I mean, like, there were higher yeah. levels of strictness than yours, but yours is pretty up there, right? I mean, you'd you'd be like a blue belt in karate, I would assume, would be like, like a, a level brown belt, more yeah. like a brown belt. Yeah, I also think it has to do a lot with uh, tradition. Meaning, just like, what the family practices. Yeah, and like we are, we come from. I, I mean, I I guess the Middle East. Uh, like I'm Syrian, so like we have a lot of Syrian culture. Oh, okay. The um, so go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, like I met some. I guess there's some Syri- Syrian or Leban- Lebanese comedians that we have the same. I kind of have the same rules in my house as they do. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. In New York or or just people that you've met abroad? No, in New York, but like the same, like, oh, um, like gr- girls, girls get married young, tend to get married young. And or they uh, growing up, I, I was never really allowed to go to the city if a boy wasn't taking me on a date and boy has to pick you up from your house and, and you know. I don't know if Americans are like, I have no idea, but very old school. Yeah. But so I remember when you, you came and you came on the show, you first start, what made you want to start doing comedy? I don't even know. I, I, I was in this, I was acting when I moved to the city, I lived with this actress and I, I always wanted to act. Mm-hmm. And then she told me to go to school. And then from there, I went to another school that was very serious. The teacher liked dramatic scenes. And every time I did a scene, I would make people laugh, but not on not on purpose. And then she's like, mm-hmm. well, you just take a comedy class. So then I Googled like comedy in New York and I took a class. And the teacher's like, you're going to go do stand up on stage. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. That's so weird because I didn't grow up with stand up. I didn't know what it was and then I did it and then I was like oh wow this is fun I get to make people laugh and and tell my story in like five minutes it was like that right yeah I I remember you coming on and you were like I could already see like you had that twinkle in your eyes like you were already stuck like and you were but you were talking about going back and maybe getting married again and you father was giving you pressure and your mother was giving you pressure and i was like i remember me saying this to you like you ain't it's you're done it's already it's so in you go ahead what you thinking no i think it i still sometimes think like that oh whether you're gonna go back no some it's just i but i think maybe it's just i don't i don't know if it's specifically to me or if it's just life because just doing comedy in general, I think everybody has different fears with it. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I suppose so. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, yeah. Business wise, is not easy. Um, you know, it's always a grind. It's a, I mean, it's a pretty crazy thing when you think about the fact that you would, you're going on stage. And you're allowing people to judge you for every second that you're in. As soon as they go, every ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Olga Neyman. You walk on stage, and they are judging you the minute you walk on stage. And then yeah. your job is okay. to kind of figure that out, uh, find out what the common ground is, and make them laugh, and keep them laughing throughout the course of of what you do. I mean, I remember because Harry. Harry brought you on because I think Harry ran into you first. Yeah. And uh, and I don't know where you, I think you were at the Lantern or something, Harry? Uh, she was at Stand Up New York. Oh. And we met at Stand Up New York. And then uh, we, we I brought her on. It's interesting. I brought her on because we actually went on a date, which is why I brought her on. Oh. Um, because I thought she was just a fascinating person. It didn't work out between uh-huh. us, but there was no... You know, it just it didn't it was it's in it. Well, I guess we can rehash it if you're yeah, we'll rehash it because it wasn't anything awkward or uncomfortable. It was just she had her mind wrapped around doing comedy, and she was like, uh, that was she she was dealing with a lot at the time, if I remember. It was very a, a very intense time for you, 
So yeah, it was it trying was. to be out of the community. You didn't know what you wanted to do. But I remember the big the big joke out of the whole thing was she goes, well, if this doesn't work out, we could be friends. And I go, no, we're not going to be friends. And Olga oh. was like, what? Why not? <laughs> he was like, why can't we hang out? I go, if, we, if we're not dating, I'm not going to be be friends like you know and, uh, and that was the thing it went on that whole night where she was joking around like no I'm, I'm a fun person I go I you are a fun person you seem like a fun person uh, but if we're not going to go out I'm not going to promise you that we'll be we'll, we'll still which be is friends funny because all good friends you know like but it's a weird kind of thing when you when you opt into this community you know and you you stick it out like because most people don't stick it out everybody comes in they dabble and you, when you say community, you mean comedy or you mean comedy? Yeah, yeah. Because she has. Yeah. A well, different... I mean, you didn't convert to Judaism, right? Oh, I don't know. You're referring to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. You're referring to me. Yeah. We both are Jewish now. We yeah. are. I mean, the Jewish law works like that. I think, right? Just because we 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 touch flesh like hands. So technically, yeah. I guess that. But you know, at the time, she was so entrenched in that there was a lot of pressure on that you had put on yourself because the expectation you're trying to figure out. You just gotten out of, of a divorce, if I remember, right? No, I got divorced way long before that, but I was moving. I moved to the city and it was uh, that was rough. And then doing comedy, it's just it just wasn't the path that was expected from me. And I was very hard on myself with that. And I also I think it was like if I'm date, like I had to always with dating always only date a Jewish, like I had to marry a Jew. So it wasn't gonna, I, I don't really, I try, I, I don't date non-Jews. I had had non-Jewish boyfriends, but then it's like, you always have to break up because then uh, my parents would, I mean, disown me. Oh, if, Not, if, you, oh, if you're date, dating somebody non-Jew. Yeah. Well, the idea is that she can't marry a non-Jew within that community. You're supposed to marry other Jews, mm -hmm. like to continue. Not only you're supposed to marry other Jews, but it's somebody that everyone should know. It's it's supposed to be within the community to some degree, if I recall. But maybe I'm wrong on well, that. Well, my father, the yeah, but that that's the thing. It probably in the beginning, like I, when I was younger, I remember being like, oh, like to marry someone who's not. Like I guess the Ashkenaz Jews, that Eastern European, even the two difference in cultures, that is different. And then, but so first it was to get married within my community. Then it was okay, maybe you could be with an Ashkenaz Jew. And now they're just like probably like any Jew, like even like any Jew. They don't have to be so religious. Just get married. Like they just, you know. They, they don't they don't care what it is well you've I, worn them down to a degree they're like we'll take anything uh olga just anything please any i think yeah once they give up like now i'm at the point where they probably like gave up on me so maybe but they still do tell me they want me to focus on getting married uh, i don't know how you focus on that but they want you to stop I fucking know. around they want you to forget about all this comedy stuff to a degree like focus on getting married but it, there's 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 still that thing that they have in the back of their heads and what they want and what their expectation is and that's what you were fighting with. How does that affect how you're dating now? I mean, because I know back then it was troublesome because you wanted to date outside of of your religion, and then eventually you couldn't keep doing it. Well, no, I kind of wanted to. I mean, I dated. I would date people in my within my religion that like knew people that like. But then after a few dates, it's like, then they're like, what? You're really not, you're really going every weekend to go do shows. You're not around. But I feel like that could be with any world, no? Like anybody who does comedy in the weekend. Yeah, I, yeah you're right. I think a lot of times women go through that. But I think when there's a, there's a, but there's a cultural, there's a cultural pressure on you that's uh, not, mm -hmm. That that has nothing to do with the pressure of. I mean, I we we see that all the time. It's like women will, you know, you'll date women and you you're doing shows when everybody else is doing shows or whatever, and nobody's around and and everybody else is gone. And you know, when everybody else is doing the couples thing, you're not. You know. Yeah, and it's I, all, also everyone's like, they say not to date a comedian, but then it's like 
I feel like the comedians are the people, the only people who would get who would understand what you deal with. Yeah. Well, there's a couple other things too. I mean, it's, it's, it's the nature of, um, you're not out and about living a normal life. So this life is not just a a different job, but it's a different time frame. So you're out every night. So, and who are you running into? Other comedians, other people. So it's hard to find just, you know, what do you call civilians uh, on the street? Um, yeah. And it become also the nature of what you do. Like you're a very open and honest person. What I always liked about Olga up front was uh, it was for 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 as nervous as she was off stage, and you know, as like on stage, really fearless in the sense of like would talk about those stories, almost like that was your outlet and that was your release. And yeah. so yeah. you know, when it comes to that, like it's a whole it it becomes intense for a lot of men to deal with that. They're not used to it. I know a lot of female comedians will always tell me that uh, every once in a while they'll date somebody and they get upset if the woman is the funny one in the relationship. If she's the humorous one, they're like, no, no, that's my thing. Has that been difficult, just dating also it, just like, as is a that comedian? With, uh, regular people? Or are you talking about other people? With regular comics? people, not other comics. Usually a comic, I mean, oh. that's probably going to, you're going to encounter that probably. There's some egotism in comedy anyway. But usually what it is is a female comic is dating some guy who, you know, during the day is an insurance salesman or whatever. And they're used to being the funny one at the office. And being funny at the office is like a two in the world of of comedy. Well, that would be annoying because I don't want that's why. it's Yes, it's probably also very hard dating because the people who do want to date me are either are people that are obsessed with comedy and then they want to help me and i just get like uh like yeah i don't need your help help you with your material or help you yeah like let me let me tell you it's funny or like or like like that like don't pitch me your jokes what's your what's your response to that i know how to be like oh uh aha yeah it's (laughs) fun Oh, that's good. Get, that's good. I, I I'll get, take that. Then I got annoyed. And then you don't like them because they don't, they don't, because it's, it's like it, you're being fucking annoying. And, <laughs> and don't, I also have this like very strange thing is that I don't want people coming to my shows. Right. Why not? Like this. I mean, I know why, but. The bo- a boy coming to my shows because yeah, like, this I mean, is just my general, thing. And I don't want you watching me. And it's just never going to be chill. It's always going to be like, oh, uh, now I have to like kind of babysit the person. Yeah. yeah. Well, bringing a person through is always you have to watch them and take care of them. But uh, but from the stance of like also as a female performer, you know, you're talking about deep stuff and not everyone can deal with that. Not every guy wants to hear about that, especially if it involves them or it's something about about sex um yeah yeah i i think that i think that i also and maybe i put it on myself where i do i do think like oh if i i say these things like what kind of person would ever want to date me so i do and maybe i do you set boundaries you're saying you set too much intensity because that's sort of self-hating to a degree where you're like if a person it likes me they're they're wrong which is well, not right. Here's a question because you know Olga's act, she's honest. So uh, Olga will talk about sex and she'll talk about blowjobs and stuff like that. Did, have you ever gone out and had like a guy who wanted to date you, heard your act, and then stopped wanting to date you? Oh, no, I think anyone who is going to date me already could see my act. It's on Instagram. Right, 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 right. Right? I mean, I guess Jewish guys, somebody, you know. No, they'll all, they'll all, they probably know and they'll probably think, okay, it's funny, whatever. But it's never, I don't know if that's, uh, maybe certain guys definitely wouldn't want to date me because of it but well, nobody's ever said I that wanna, to you. No, nobody's ever I'll, said that to you up front no did they? no but i did get yelled at like for working on shabbat <laughs> a boyfriend a, yelled at you for working on shabbat like he's supposed to be with me and he wasn't even he wasn't even keeping shabbat he just said on friday nights you should be with me 
So he wasn't even doing Shabbat. He was just using that as an excuse because Shabbat is yeah. uh, Friday night as uh, when sun goes down, if I remember. I just yeah. remember there was there's food involved, which is why I liked it so much. <laughs> because they would do it at the college. They'd be like, you you want to come out to Shabbat? Like, uh-huh. They're like, there's going to be free food. Exactly. I'm like, I'm there. And I'll go to any. That's... Make it. Yeah, it's true. It's so funny. Wait, and then sorry. they'll want to make it what? Go ahead. No, 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 you, no, no. It's funny. I call. I didn't go to college, but yes, I know they do have those things. The Jewish organizations they make like chillin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they I invite to, people. I out. used to do sukkah. I used to do comedy in the sukkah every yeah. year at at City College, and they would have me. In. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um. But it's it's a it's a real struggle to kind of keep the the cultural history in place. Well, I mean, but as you be, you become more secular, right. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're exposed to too much, so much. uh, Do you still have a, a connection to it or are you kind of like, no, I definitely, definitely still have a connection to it. Like there's, there's, I mean, I do. I mean, the things that I always, feel connect felt connected to I still feel connected but there is like um I think on Yom on Yom Kippur I used to but I don't think this happened because of comedy I think this happened because of COVID because I used to make sure that I was there for Yom Kippur all day I would pray and like and this year I did I went to the synagogue I went twice but I didn't go in the day and I think that was because of in COVID, nobody was going to, to mm-hmm. synagogue. And I was like, oh, if it's not a big deal to pray last year or the year before, now I'm like, now I'm over. I don't want to go and like and pray. Right. Does that make sense? It, it makes complete sense. It makes, but that, and that's, uh, it, you when you break the pattern of things, you realize how much of it w- is just done for the sake of tradition or pattern or consistency or superstition. So, yeah, you know, I know I know a couple people who, uh, you know, a friend of mine is Catholic and he's there, you know, during the pandemic, they stopped going. And then you remember that, you know, you're allowed to pray from home. You don't need to do all this. You can break the patterns and you realize right. how much of it you're doing for the sake of not even yourself, but the tradition for other people. Olga, let me ask you this. What is it that what is it that you want? What do you? What would you like as far as relationships and and dating goes? What 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 would your hope and dream be? Um, I don't know. That's such a good question. I right. Well, thank I, you. I, I, get, <laughs> <laughs> I think I would. It's so it's hard because I I do feel like um I'm I'm in this like I don't want to change anything right now with my comedy. I feel like I'm growing into a certain, like a certain, I, I'm just, I'm growing. I'm not where I want to be yet. And then I find that when, if I date, it always gets, even if I don't want it to get in my way, it's a distraction and it gets in my way and it, and it stops me from doing things. Like <sighs> even a guy I was dating this year, like, I had a show and it's so dumb and he was so chill and would not care. But I did, I, I had a show at Caroline's and another show at the comic strip. And I didn't go to the show at the comic strip because I said, okay, I canceled on him before. Let me just not cancel on him again. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, and he's so chill, but it's more of my own, like, Oh, I feel so bad if I do this again. And it splits. It makes me, like, well, you it, see, you feel totally. resentment either way. So what happens is when you go to the yeah. show, you feel bad that you didn't spend time with that person. But then if you don't go to the show, you're like, this is business. Who knows what could have happened tonight? Uh, who knows if I couldn't get a spot tonight or whatever? And then yeah. you begin to resent it. So you resent it from both ways. And that can be yeah. very complicated. Yeah. Especially, especially when you're starting as a new comic. You, you know, I tell women comics all the time. I go, you, you're married to this. Your yeah. husband is comedy, and and your side bitch is whatever yeah. significant other. I mean, because in order to get to the point where you can make a living doing it, mm-hmm. that's a lot of work to get to the point where when you came on our show, you know, and you had done a couple of shows to the point where 
you're actually making money and you're doing. Have you headlined yet or no? I have headlined, but I don't. I, I headlined. When did it? 2019 was the first time. Right. I did the, governors, but governors puts me up to headline, and then I had a line. Uh, no, not I don't think I do like half hour headline, but governor uh-huh. is the only place where I did uh, 50 minutes. But I don't, I don't like, I don't like it. <sighs> Well, you know, you're, you've, you've headlined, but you're not a headliner yet. That's a, that's a whole yeah. different art form. And that's the other thing as you, as you progress in this game, what you realize is everything has a different sort of mm-hmm. mindset to do it. You know, being a comedian is almost like being a triathlon in the sense of it's a big difference between doing a five minute, you know, doing a guest spot. It's a big difference between hosting. There's a big difference between middling. There's a big difference between being the headliner and then you got to mm-hmm. hold people's attention for 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. When you envision, so what you have to try to figure out, Olga, is what you envision it being. You always want to do comedy. I mean, you're good at it. You know, you, it seems to be the one thing out of everything that you have always said yes to more often than not. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so what you have to try to find is some type of relationship that fits in with that comedy thing, right? I mean, you don't plan on ever quitting comedy, do you, for the sake of marriage? Uh, the only thing I would say is because I do, I would love to have, um, I want to write a show. So if I was, if that happened. That's comedy then though. Like, that's yeah, comedy. Yeah, right. yeah, that's not but what I'm talking it. about. What I'm saying is you're not, you don't have any intention of, right. of quitting stopping. show business, stopping and then going, I'm no. just going to get married and have a family. No, because right. then I wouldn't be me, and no one would want to live with. I'd be, I'd be. You'd be really miserable and resentful. Fun. Yeah. No, I yeah. get that. I get that aspect of it because I would be the same way. You know, I think about it all the time because, you know, I, I'm at the age where I should have kids by now if I wanted to have them. But part of me goes, I don't want to resent the kids. I would be a good father, but I would be incomplete to a degree. So I, yeah. I, I fully understand that. But does that knowing that do you approach the dating differently now going this is what i have to have so these certain men are out so anybody who's more of a traditionalist is out does it change your approach when you're dating yeah i think i'm like because it used to be like if they are like that then they'll be like no i don't care i don't care but then they really do care so i that i found out when they say they don't care i'm like oh trust me you do right so that's that and how, long, thing, how long before it pops up that you start to see that they care? It's always like a month. A month. Yeah. Of course so, they, and I don't blame them. I would care too. But then I do think, okay, let's say I did end up, um, let's say I got into more clubs in the city. I, I, I could do, I'll be here more because they go out to Long Island a lot. That doesn't make it easy either to date because that, I do spots on Friday, Saturdays, and that's my weekend. And then it's <laughs> to barely have time, like, you know, if you're date. But if I was in the city, like. Uh, I mean, if you were just bouncing around in the city. It would probably be around. easier to date. Mm. Right. And then I, I could, I, I would think. But I don't know. It's very, it's not easy. This. You know, I mean, I don't think it's easy for you know, Gentile, just women in general, because it's it's such a it, it's such a, a commanding kind of profession. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times guys feel emasculated because you're in control, because you're the performer, because you're the person that people come up to afterwards and say, oh, wow, you were so funny. They don't have that focus. And it takes a really kind of mature guy to to um, to be that kind of guy that mm-hmm. is willing to put up with that. But I also feel like I, I feel like you kind of you you're like you fall in love easy. Would you say that? Like if you uh, like somebody? Yeah. Yeah, I and that, but that also sped because that will take me away from comedy. Oh, so when you when you get into somebody, you you kind of abandon comedy a little bit or no? Yeah, I think I would drop things. <laughs> Not all part, but I think I'd be like, 
I won't do anything super bad, but I think I would be like, instead of, oh, let me see if I could do that show. That's not like a real, like if it's not such an important show, mm. then I wouldn't be, I'd be like, nah, I'd rather hang out with whatever. Mm. Or even if I do do the show, I'll, you know. You'll do your spot and run also, out. Yeah. yeah and instead that, of hanging out and make networking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big part too. Uh, Dante, do you think, look, Dante, I, I, I'm curious your opinion on this. Do you think there is anything wrong with when you're giving some attention to the relationship? Not saying that you abandon comedy, but. No, I don't. But, I, you know, the thing is. You know, Olga's doing well enough. She's doing spots, paid yeah, spots yeah. and regular spots. Maybe it's okay for her to slow down and go, let me take a day like, or two. I, I, but then I'm like, why? But Dante, you said. Well, here's so. my thing. I, I think that you. You're funny enough and you're savvy enough and you're experienced enough that you can that you don't have to do every spot that somebody throws at you, meaning you can I feel like you can do you like if you're doing stuff on the weekdays mm -hmm. and you're doing two, three spots on the weekdays, I think if you could take a Monday or a Tuesday off, I mean, because part of. Part of being funny is living life. Like it's your your funny comes from the perspective of you living life, and mm -hmm. uh, if you don't live life, you can't really talk about it. Like there's a lot of comics who, you know, they work so much that they don't live life at all, and so you know they're on the road in a strip mall somewhere in a hotel running, doing shows, hanging out with people after the shows, and that's their own life, their only life, and they don't have any perspective. They have nothing else to talk about because yeah. that's all they do. It's it's Chicago, it's Illinois strip mall, and it's Houston strip mall, and it's this place, and, and you go into these places, and then what you start to do is you become kind of a recluse where you're not living. So even to help your comedy out, you got to live life and do things so that you have something to talk about. And you got to have people in your life because there's relationships. I mean, we're still human beings. I mean, I totally get that when you're a young comic, how you want to get every, and this goes for anything. I mean, we're talking about comedy, but we're talking about there's a dedication that anybody that wants any level of success that you got to put in. And mm -hmm. you got to say no to a lot. Um, the problem is most of the time people don't say they say no to the good shit too, like the, the stuff that enhances you and gives you dimension and they waste time on video games or whatever the fuck they're into or whatever, which I'm not saying you can't have that, but I'm, I mean, you, you, you're at a place now where you can kind of decide what's important. I mean, if we're, yeah. going, if we're going up on stage and you're doing the same jokes, you're not rationally working on something. It might it might behoove you to go out on a date and, and have some experience or go to a museum or go on a vacation or go do something different. Because, like, for me, you know, even if I'm doing spots, um, if I'm doing spots, I mean, I'm, the spots are at night. Like Monday or Tuesday, I'm chilling or I'm not doing any, you know, I'm just kind of living life. And I think that gives you a perspective. Unless, of course, your comedy is such that you're, you're, you're sort of your comedy is philosophical where you're just viewing life from up here. You know, like mm -hmm. the like the tennis judge, like you're in the high yeah. chair looking down as but if but that's not really your comedy. Your comedy is kind of a you have a real personal touch. I like to think of myself as that comedy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you are. No, I mean, joking. I think you're really close to it. I mean, um No, I don't. I I it's it's weird. I mean, I don't I'm not the type of person that something happens and then I'm like, oh, I gotta write about this. Mm -hmm. It's never been. Mm -hmm. But why i don't know why and it, it I, will it, it will i mean things will strike you later on you know as you become more proficient but i mean 
I think what's what's attractive to somebody is somebody who has something that they're passionate about, that they're artistic mm-hmm. about. And I think even a, even a, any man, you know, any man who's confident enough that's mm-hmm. got his own thing in, going on is going to want somebody who has their thing going on. I think the problem is when you look at things on a cultural level where you have like this super conservative culture level, right? It mm-hmm. It's less about the culture and more about the control. You know, yeah, it's I'm the man I want. Like you said, this guy doesn't even do Shabbat, but he wants. That was crazy. Me. Yeah, you don't practice it, but you want me to. You like, mm-hmm. it, I mean, so if I do this, then it was what? just an excuse. It was an excuse to try yeah. to maintain control. It's it's convenient when it was convenient for him. Yeah, to use the religion, and, and it's more about stopping you from doing what you want to do than it is about you doing something that he wants you to do or he really desires Mm -hmm. your company or, and then I think there's a level of honesty that you got to have. I mean, one thing about comedy is it, 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 the funniest comics are the ones that are most honest. Mm -hmm. And when you're not honest, you're dishonest, but I think it all comes out. Like if you're somebody's like, Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm I do not going to bother. It's not going to bother me. You just go, okay, we'll give it a shot. And then as soon as you start to, See that it bothers you. You go, I right, look. This is got you know, like yeah. this is not working. You know, yeah. Oh no, I wasn't. Th- you know, and they'll they'll back down. But I, I think the biggest problem is that people are liars. They just, just people lie so much. They they're insecure, and they're lying about who they are so that they could be in a conversation that they don't deserve to be in in the first place. So if you're a person who is saying, I'm this and I'm that, I'm, I'm not this, I'm that, it all comes out with, you know, my mom used to say, well, don't come out in the wash, comes out in the rinse. You know, right. he, you can't lie about who you are. Eventually, we're going to see who you are. And if you're working on yourself in a real positive way, I mean, and I, I think this is, I really think that what you do is I, I think you're funny and I think it's really mm-hmm. dope for you to have the, the dedication that you have this based on the fact that you have this sexism in terms of you not supposed to do this. And then there's a culture behind it that doesn't allow you to do this, doesn't give space. And and then you don't have parents that you don't have parents that are really being supportive and so on and so forth. But you know, all in all, it's like you're doing you because it's your life. And if you don't do your life, I remember when I first met you and we were talking about this and you were like, your dad wants you to get married. He wants you to do this, wants you to do that. And he goes, you know, but it's all nice. And he would, you know, I'd have a nice house. I'd have this. I'd have... And I said to you, it's a gold, it's a gold bird cage. You remember yeah, yeah. So I do it, remember that. It's it's gold, but it's still a bird cage, and there's still yeah. a lock on it, and it limits you. And you know, I've I've found that even you know, Harry and I have been talking about this for weeks. Like we do this podcast, and we talk about relationships, and then all kind. And there's so many guys who are doing who have basically taken our content and used our content, and they blew up because they've wow. leaned into the controversy. They've been really controversial and assholes and and that's what sells and i asked myself if do i want to do that am mm-hmm. i willing to lean into the the am i willing to lean into the 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 the, the controversy enough to be disingenuous to, just to get clicks I, I just don't have it yeah. in me yeah. i'd rather grow it slow yeah with real people who love what I do. And I mean, I, I, I mean, Harry will tell you, we get calls from women, calls from men, DMs. We love what you do. Thank you. And Thank you for helping. Yeah. I, I, I got a call from uh, this guy the other day. Yesterday was like, don't you get mad that they're just stealing your words and stuff? And I go, well, you know, I don't have to deal with that. Like, right. It, it's people that are saying, 
you shouldn't do this, Olga. You shouldn't do that. A woman shouldn't do this. A good Jewish woman shouldn't. They're telling you that most likely because they're unhappy and they mm-hmm. want you to, they just want you to be, because what you're doing is you're scaring them mm-hmm. by being rebellious, by doing your own thing, by pursuing the things that you're happy. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I know we're all unhappy about it some of the time we don't get books somebody doesn't work with us somebody that worked with us stop working with us you don't have a great set but the fact that you're pursuing your happiness in a mm-hmm. real way unapologetically is pretty dope and i can't see like i can see a dude who really recognizes that mm-hmm. really being into you but he's got to be mature enough that he's not one of the liars because right. if he's got any lie in him, it's going to, it's going to come out. Oh, you think they lie to themselves? Yes. I mean, you know that if a guy tells you, Oh, I'm going to be fine with it. The first thing yeah. you say is no, you're not. And pretty much, you know, in a month, this, this is going to be a problem. Yeah. How do you know that in a month it's going to be a problem? It's because you have done it so often, right around three weeks, three and a half mm-hmm. weeks. It's well, you probably here's a, here's here's even better. Let's play this game. What is the first thing? What's the first sign that you see? Because it's probably all the same. I think it's always that it's going to sound like not a sign, but it's always always starts it. Oh. I'm totally okay with you. I just want to help, but like, I, I want to make your life better. I don't want, I don't want to like ruin anything in your career or do it, but it's like, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell that to, to a guy I was dating. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to get involved in your career, but like, why are you even saying that? Like, right. You're, that you're saying that the fact that you're so out of it means you're in it. Right, like meaning, yeah, that he's so. I don't. I didn't ask you if you're gonna support what I do or like right. what I. You're just coming out and telling me that. That's so strange. Right, right, he, it's, right. It's like yeah, saying, it's like a kid, like a guy, like a pedophile that really wants to work with kids. You like, how come you like kids so much? You know <laughs> <laughs> and that. I, I don't know. I can't. Or it could just, no, it could be like this. It'd be like, oh, I just want to let you know I'm totally fine with you having brown hair. I love people who have brown hair. And then it's like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about, like, why is that even a topic? Because, uh-huh. like, because being a comedian, it's my life. Like, this is what I am. So why are you even mentioning right. that? Yeah. Does that, I don't know if that analogy Yeah, well, works. I mean, so that's the first thing is the, 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 this unrealistic position that nothing is going to be quick because let's be honest, whether or not you're a comic or not, you, you get with somebody, you get to know them and you find out whether you fit, you still got to, even if you weren't a comic, you have to find that out. Um, so if you, there are, so it's almost like, I'm going to love you unconditionally. Love is never unconditional. There's always right. conditions. Yeah. So if you're telling me you don't have no conditions, number one, it says to me that you don't really respect yourself. Because <laughs> why would you be in a relationship where you get nothing of what you want? Right. You know? Yeah. That doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. And then the second part is, oh, so you're so agreeable. N- like, none of this, none mm-hmm. of this is going to bother you. The fact that I... You know, you almost want somebody who's going to be like, yo, I, I I know this is your job and I love but I but I love you and I love spending time with you. And I mm-hmm. want I, I'm going to need some time from you. Yeah. Like, even that. I mean, like, uh, let me ask you this. If somebody said that to you, what would you say? Um. I would say, first of all, so it really has to depend if I like them. Obviously. Well, let, let's assume they like you. I mean, you okay, like them. if I like them. Right. It's, okay, because that's another thing. So I'll say, well, on the if you know I'm working, every, like weekends I work, it's like, 
then why you ask me every weekend what I'm doing on Saturday or Friday? Like, you know, so right. like that. So, but maybe I, if I like them and say, okay, but, oh, I have time. Maybe I'll come to you after my show or I have time before my show. We could get a drink or something like that. And I'll make time, the right. time, but don't, it, but I, it could be because I'm also maybe it's my own thing. And I get a little bit like harsh with it because Sometimes when I do give up stuff, like it's the thought is also with, and I was going to say before that, oh, I'm giving up this show or opportunity for somebody that I just, I don't even know. I worked so hard to, to, to be able to get that. Things. They don't understand the simple fact that you have the ability to go on stage is something that you earn. You work to make that. that. You work to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, it's just everybody thinks you just. You know, like I've had guys, guys say to me, "Oh man, I saw you on uh, such and such movie, such and such." Uh, you 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 should do more of that. It's like, yeah, I you know, right. like like it's my Obviously. choice. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you know, you should you should do more shows, television shows. That would what else? What else you got going on? Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, we're scratch, scratch. So just the, the simple ability to to have the ability to you know to 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 execute this to get up on stage where you saw on stage enough that it would annoy somebody is 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 work. Just to yeah. get to the point where you're working so frequently that somebody that you would annoy somebody. They don't even understand that. Yeah. You know, it's, to it's, get was, stage time. I was talking about this. Uh, we we're just, I don't know, I guess people in the car, are like just, I guess, talking about like bring, bringer shows and barking and mics and like my brain, like I was remembering those days and it's like, really is a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of work yeah like yeah. a lot so then because it, i yeah it's the equivalent of a master's degree but yeah you, with no with no syllabus like at least yeah. you, you go over a master, you got a syllabus I, let me do this 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 you're literally feeling it out every step of the way yeah and there's no guarantee oof but there's no guarantee with anything, I guess. Yeah, but, but if yeah. You, you go to school for your master's, you know. You do have a degree of some kind the, that you the, can the, use. The, the, yeah. the, you have this degree that you can use that degree as currency to get a job to do this, especially if, you, if you're if you in a field that you know is technical and, and mm -hmm. kind of difficult to get. So, you know, if you get a yeah. degree, if you get a master's degree in chemistry, you're going to work. You'll, you'll yeah. have a job, you know. Yeah, or in math or something like that. Olga, how, uh, how how do you meet the guys that you date? Do they do they do they hit on you? Where do you, where do you encounter the the crop of people you sometimes date? Sometimes people, okay. Sometimes people set me up. Sometimes, uh, I guess there could be like uh, Hinge or Raya, mm. and then so the dating apps. Okay, yeah. And then I'll get like, I get, I, but I don't answer. That's the other thing. If someone DMs me, for some reason, I'm just like, ah, I don't, I don't, I don't date people who DM me. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should. Is it because they DM you via the comedy page? Maybe you see them seeing your comedy. Yeah, like they're it, being it, like, you're so funny. I don't want to take you out. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not, it's, 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 hard. I don't know. Well, it's I guess it could also be you. Ha you have to have your defense mechanism up. It is a weird sort of thing to a degree. Yeah, I mean, if, if they're on your Instagram, that's wide open. You know, like, like it's not even. Yeah. I don't know. Also, they could see my Instagram. I don't know what you look like. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like, they. Know, that's the thing. It's like the. But also, I don't. I don't like. Yes, I am who I am on stage and the things I say. It's a big part of me, but it's like. They, it's a very, it feels like a very uneven situation. They see the in, like my whole world and you or see whatever. Insights and you don't know who they are. Yeah, and and sometimes it is awkward because like I'll I like people will come. Like I went to a wedding this last week, and 
they'll say, oh my God, I feel like I talk to you every day because I'm watching your Instagram, but but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't and know they, you at all. <laughs> right. And they'll be like, I know, I know you don't know me and whatever, but I want, but they're like, but I feel like I'm your friend because I see you every day. I was like, oh, okay. You know, which is yeah. nice. But yeah. it, it, to date someone, they have all this info and yeah. it's like, they listen, they can listen to podcasts that I do, everything. They could know so much about me. I know zero about them. So when a guy, because sometimes guys will maybe be like, could you set me up with this girl, with Alga, to someone that knows me? Yeah. And it's very, it's also. It's that almost creepy. It's creepy. Creeps, it creeps me out. Yeah. Well, right? you know what? I don't know. I just went through a thing with Godfrey where this girl was like trying to scam him online. You know, like, See, and he yeah. was like, he was like, where, like, they know so much stuff about me. And and so Godfrey is such a humble dude. I was like, you're fucking Godfrey. You're yeah. on podcast. You're a podcast. You just do people's podcasts, acting, your IMDb. There's so much information. I go, you're an open book. So you're wondering how they know so much about them. It's because you told them. And, and yeah. then you're wondering, wow, how do they know so much about me? Because all we have to do is Google it. You know, it's scary. So, it's scary. Yeah. I it met is. your sister real quick. I met your little sister. Rena. She, she is adorable uh-huh. and very strange in a good way. She, She's strange she, in a good way. She's very independent and young and kind of, but she's going to be dope, man. I mean, that's if you, my, my advice is if you ever need a manager, She's the oh, one. Sister. You, oh yeah, she she's she's so shy. She's dope though. She's she's really mm-hmm. intuitive. So I had a long she's talk. Very, with, she is, and that's what you want. Somebody who kind of knows you and sees you, and she sees things when other people yeah, ain't she seeing. Does. So she does. Oh, that good. Thank true. you so much for doing this. Oh. I appreciate you. I know you got to bounce out of here. Yeah. Um, anything you want to plug? No, nah, I'm good. All right. Shows. I'm doing Kim shows. When is it? March, February 22nd. Okay. At, at the, uh, was it a Wednesday or Saturday? Comic strip. Comic strip. Okay. When, will you be there? Maybe. I probably, I probably will be. For that. And right. um, but thank you for having me. It's All right. such oh, a good I love talk. you. I okay. Love you. Hope to see you soon. You will. You will. All right, baby. Bye. All Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.